sometime last November, I was sitting around watching my pension dissolve, <laughs> and like, Sarah Palin reading the New York Times. And there was a description in the paper of the, new, the economic stimulus that the uh, then not yet inaugurated administration was considering enacting as a solution to the, um, well, I, I regard it as entirely directed to restoring my retirement funds, but apparently there are other people in the world. Um, so, and, uh, and, and, and it was going to be the single largest expenditure of government funds in the history of the United States. That's right, is it not? Yes, the single largest expenditure of government funds in the history of the United States, including both sides of the Civil War. And um, it was all going to Bob the Builder. <laughs> roads, bridges, and green jobs, roads, bridges, and green jobs, roads, bridges, and green jobs. If I heard those words another time, I was going to throw up. So I started asking myself, who is likely to get these jobs, building the roads, building the bridges, and the green jobs, roads and green jobs, a little bit of an oxymoron there to begin with, but I digress. <laughs> So I went to the Bible of all ignorant would-be op-ed writers, which would be most of us, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. <laughs> and guess what? There's a reason that it's Bob the Builder. Only 3% of the jobs in direct construction are held by women. Only 9% of the jobs, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in the construction business, including, you know, the bookkeepers, are held by women. And um, as for green jobs, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm in favor of green, I guess. Um, it's not like high on my list of uh, concerns in my old age, but um, it turns out, if you think about it, what are green jobs, right? They're engineers. That's who does green stuff. They engineer it. And only 12% of the engineers in the United States now 40 years, 40 plus years after the publication of The Feminine Mystique, only 12% of the engineers in the United States are female, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So I gathered up the unemployment statistics, and I went to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the source of all of my incidental wisdom, and got the unemployment statistics. And um, in fact, for the quarter uh, preceding um, the December 9th, the uh, the, for the quarter, what would it be, uh, November, October, November, December, um, the uh, unemployment rate for women actually went up at the same rate that it did for men, although over the course of the whole recession, unemployment rate for women has not gone up as fast as the unemployment rate for men. It's gone up, okay? I figure, you know, the guys can look after themselves. I'm actually interested in looking after women and um, since their unemployment rate was going up, maybe some of the jobs in the rescue plan could be uh, uh, allocated to job categories in which there are a lot of women. Now, the last time I looked, from the start of the recession a year, well, gosh, now time goes so fast when you're having fun, almost 18 months ago, 15 months ago, 16 months ago, um, from the start of the recession 16 months ago, women's unemployment rose 1.6 points, while men's rose 2.8 points. In other words, we had 70% as much pain as the men did, but only 10% as much of the aspirin, until the bill actually manifested itself in the vastly more desirable way that it did. So I wrote this up, and I sent it to the New York Times which publishes easily 1% of the stuff that I send to them every day. <laughs> and I actually got back an email from the New York Times. This is always a happy moment in any would-be public intellectual's life, right? You know, oh, they're interested. Um, I got an email back from them saying uh, that they wondered whether I could make my suggestions more ambitious. Mm -hmm. This was, I have to give them credit, I want to say the names David Shipley and Mary Doonwald out loud because they actually asked me to give them back a more ambitious proposal than the one that I had. And believe me, when you're Linda Hirschman, almost never do people write you back and say, <laughs> you're not out there enough. This just does not happen. So. Okay, so, so, but enough about me. Let's talk about all the other feminists and economists out there. 
Put another way, why was an old retired professor of philosophy the only one to notice that the proposed economic stimulus was all going to Bob the Builder and that all these jobs were held by men? Turns out I wasn't. There was a feminist economist who was thinking about the same thing, Randy Albelda, if I'm not butchering her name. Um, and she, while I was editing my piece for the New York Times, she published a, a similar opinion in the Boston Globe. Heidi Hartman and her wonderful organization down in D.C. were also working very hard behind the scenes, and lots of people were working, including the weave group, who I call my weavers, um, uh, of his, especially the historians who were doing a wonderful job about gathering the information from the New Deal. So there were lots of other people working on it, and when the stimulus package came about, as the, the other speakers have described, it was vastly better than the roads, bridges, and green jobs that had been talked about throughout the fall. Vastly better. I take complete credit. I, I, I just want you to know, before I, when I go, die, right, and there's going to be, you know, St. Petra up there, and I'm going to say to her, it was my op-ed in the New York Times that got all that money for the unemployed women, and especially teachers. Um, but I want to talk, but enough about me, I want to talk about how little we hear about women in any economic context. Why are we not hearing this? Okay? Why? I mean, this makes no sense. This is the single most important social issue facing this country and the single most important social issue facing women in this country. Why are we not hearing more about this? <sighs> so I'm remembering the old feminist movement. You know, the old feminist movement, the one that would turn itself inside out to get the attention of the federal administration when and to get media attention to the material conditions of women's lives like equal pay and segregated want ads for jobs. Remember the old women's movement, right? One of my friends in it said the only thing she likes better than a sit-in is a march. I'm thinking about the old women's movement. 